Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross from PTCG Radio, and I'm back with a new kind of video today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a quick flick through all the important cards from the Professor Cup format of 2014. And the reason I'm doing this is because over the next few days, maybe a week or so, there will be seven live videos going up, I say live, I mean recorded live, of me and other people playing in the Professor Cup format that I recorded at a recent tournament in Sutton Coldfield. So, because it's going to make no sense and because these videos will include a bunch of cards that you never see being played in the standard modified format, I thought I'd better give an introductory video so you all know what I'm talking about as I go through these videos. So, first things first, the rules. Professor Cup format 2014 was 30 card decks, and because it's 30 card decks you only take free prizes to win. You could only use common and uncommon cards to make your 30 card deck, and they had to be from XY and Flashfire. It was XY on, so a very, very narrow card pool. There were also random rules introduced throughout. Now at the Real Professor Cup, they did some random rules like Tropical Beach is now in play, but they did some other rules like swapping your deck at the beginning of a game, um, and playing with prizes up and all of that stuff. Now... As we go through the games, I will point out when those extra rules are coming in. The extra rules are done slightly differently in the tournament you'll be watching, but they're largely similar. So I'm going to make this as quick as I can, but I'm going to run through because you need to know these cards if the other videos are going to make any sense. So starting off, first of all, with draw power, this format is very, very slim. We have Professor Sycamore, which looks good. But seriously, guys, discarding your entire hand and drawing 7 in a 30-card deck is brutal. You will be wanting this if you're playing Torkoal, because you want Fire Energy in the discard. Other than that, you can't really touch it with a barge pole. We've also got Shauna, which allows you to shuffle your deck and draw 5, or shuffle your hand into your deck and draw 5, which most people are playing. And with a dearth of other options, Roller Skates, um, flip a coin if heads draw 3 cards, has seen a huge amount of play. If you're playing Fire Energy, you can also play Fiery Torch, because uh, you discard a Fire Energy and draw two cards. But obviously, if you don't play Fire Energy, it's no good. I should stop at this point to mention that I am using images from PokerBeach.com. I have got in touch and been given permission to use them, just to save me having to take pictures of my own cards, which would have taken ages. So thank you to PokerBeach.com for allowing me to use their images. Now, because the draw power is not that great, and a lot of people are playing Roller Skates and Shauna, and that's about it. Oh, I should also mention 30 card decks, for those of you that don't know. In the same way that you have the amount of cards and you have the amount of prizes, you also have the amount of cards you can have of a particular type. So these cards are all limited to two copies per deck. Well, that's standard for 30 card format. So we have a lot of other supporters which are non-draw supporters. So Team Flare Grunt becomes an amazing card, allowing you to discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Because you're not going to be using a draw supporter every turn, and because there's basically no energy acceleration other than Blacksmith, this becomes a very good card. We also see Cassius, allowing you to shuffle one of your Pokemon and all of the cards attached to it into your deck, stopping your opponent giving up a prize, and maybe even stopping your deck out. There's also Blacksmith. For those of you playing Fire Energy, you've got the whole Fiery Torch Blacksmith combo. What this means is that you can discard energy with Fiery Torch and then attach it with Blacksmith. If you're lucky, you can even get that going on turn 1 to have free energy attachments on turn 1. Pretty darn good. We've also got Lysandra, not Lysander, which allows you to switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with one of his active, i.e. dragging whatever you want active from the bench, becoming a much better card because we're not using a draw supporter every turn. We also see Pokemon Center Lady, which allows you to heal 60 damage and remove all special conditions. And again, this is a classic example of a card which is thriving in this kind of format, because you're not using a draw supporter every turn, and whereas 60 damage isn't great against an evil towel that's got 130 damage on, most of these Pokemon have between about 60 and 100 HP, so 60 damage in all special conditions is absolutely clutch a lot of the time. And finally we see Pokemon Fan Club, searching for two basic Pokemon and putting them onto your bench. Partly, this is really good because, again, we're not using a draw supporter every turn, and a lot of the time we just want a basic and an energy attachment. We're playing simpler decks, largely. This also is one of very few Pokemon search options. 
The only other Pokemon search options we have are Great Ball, look at the top seven cards of your deck and put a Pokemon into your hand that you find there. Bearing in mind it's a 30 card deck, so this is the equivalent of taking 14 in a regular deck, so you are more likely to get something you like. And Ultra Ball, but in a 30 card deck where you're only playing two copies of each card, the discard becomes fairly brutal from Ultra Ball, so it doesn't see a huge amount of play. Although you do see it being played, obviously, in a Torkoal deck, or any other fire deck, because you've also got Blacksmith to attach the energy. Moving into other trainers then, we've got Evo Soda, which is kind of Pokemon Search, kind of not. Essentially, you can get a Stage 1, because I believe there are no uncommon Stage 2s. You can get a Stage 1 and put it on of your basic. We've got Hard Charm to get 20 less damage done to your Pokemon. And we've got Muscle Band to get 20 more damage. We've got Professor's Letter to search for basic energy cards. And we've got Red Card, which did see a huge amount of play, because it's a disruption card. And because you're playing two copies of every card, because a lot of the decks are very straightforward and simple, because we're not playing a huge amount of draw supporters, that means we can play something like Red Card. Seen as the 61st card in a lot of decks when it was first released, it's now the 27th, 28th card in the deck, which means it can go in there. Essentially, this is really good on turn one, because assuming your opponent starts with a single basic, instead of starting with a seven card hand, once they've drawn the card for their turn, they'll be starting with five. We also see Super Potion, allowing you to heal 60 damage and discard an energy, and then you can just attach it the next turn, because we're in a slower format, and we're not seeing a rash of one-hit KOs like we've seen in the regular format. You'll see as you go through the videos I'll be posting soon. Power Pad is absolutely key because of all the supporters we've seen before. You can get your Shaunas back, but you can get your Lissandras back, and you can get your Team Flare Grunts back. Two Power Pad, two Team Flare Grunt, that is potentially six energy discarded from your opponent. That's pretty darn good. We also see Sacred Ash a little bit because it's the only recovery card in the format taking five Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. If you want a trainer card to recover basic energy, tough. There ain't one. And we see Startling Megaphone because, as previously mentioned, we've got Hard Charm and Muscle Band, and they're both pretty darn good. We also see Trick Shovel, which, again, is a kind of card that you don't see in the regular format, but with less draw supporters and simpler decks and slower decks, Trick Shovel becomes a much better card. Not to mention, of course, that your opponent is only playing two copies of each card at most. Now, it says look at the top card of either player's deck. You may discard that card. Maybe you would play this with a fire deck to try and fuel Blacksmith. Really, the card might as well read discard the top card of your opponent's deck. Unless it's a fire energy and you think they're playing Blacksmith, in which case, don't. Because, of course, he doesn't force you to discard the energy. If you can hit one of their two Shaunas, one of their two Muscle Band, one of their two Double Colorless Energies, this card is absolutely clutch. Speaking of energy, we have both Double Colorless and Rainbow Energy in the format, but we don't have things like Enhanced Hammer. We just have Team Flare Grunt. And to be honest with you, Team Flare Grunt gets rid of Basic Energy and it gets rid of Special Energy. So there's no real downside other than putting 10 damage on your Pokemon, which in a format with such low HP Pokemon does become a problem pretty quickly. So let's move in and talk about the Pokemon. There aren't that many, and there really aren't that many. And when there's Stage 1 Pokemon, I'm only going to mention the basic where you're going to be wanting to use the basic. So there's Ledian, a grass Pokemon that does 30 for 1 energy, or 50 for 2. Honestly, I'm putting this in because you will see it in one of the videos. I don't think it's very good. Also not very good, Furfrow. It's got the old Donphan ability or Bouffalant ability of reducing damage done by 20. And it does 80 for free energy, but getting free energy on is a bit of a pain in the neck. And the fighting weakness, as we'll see, is far from ideal. Moving into proper Pokemon that are actually viable and saw a lot of play, we've got Diggersby. And essentially there's two um, good attacks here. Pick up, double colourless energy, put two item cards from your discard pile into your hand. 
or dig for free energy, flip a coin, if heads, Diggers B is invulnerable next turn. Now everybody's playing Lissandra, but there's no escape rope or anything here, so this becomes a very good attack unless your opponent has a Lissandra and is willing to play it next turn, which of course is a big if. Now, Bunnelby is actually relevant here, so we'll mention him quickly. Through a double colourless energy, 10 damage, and on a coin flip heads, immunity the following turn. So it's a way of kind of buying a turn to get your Diggers B out. We also see Dodrio, and it's only his first attack we're worried about here. He's got a resistance to fighting, which is pretty funky, and he's got rage for a single colourless energy. 20 plus 10 for each more damage on this Pokemon. If Dodrio's at 80 damage and you put on a Muscle Band, that's going to do 120 damage, which is pretty brutal in a format like this. You'll also notice there are no good Lightning Pokemon, so it might as well have no weakness. Dodrio's rubbish, let's ignore him. Now the deck that I played, and you'll see the first vi five videos I'm posting up will be from me uh, and the, my tournament. Soul Rock essentially has the first attack, 40 damage for a colourless energy if you've got a Lunatone on your bench, or 60 for free, but you're not going to be playing it much. The Grass Weakness may be relevant if people are playing Ledian. Um, now, we also see Bergmite and Avalug, but we'll see them in a minute. We've got Lunatone. And what Lunatone does here is it's got the attack for one energy, double draw. It allows you to draw two cards. Now, ideally, we want to have Soul Rock active, turn one, Lunatone on the bench. But if we start with Lunatone, it's not the end of the world. We attach an energy, draw two cards, and because it's got the single retreat cost, we can just retreat it next turn and get an energy on a Soul Rock to do 40 the following turn. So it's not your ideal starter. You want to be starting Soul Rock, but it's not the end of the world. Now we also see Avalug here, who is the best card in the format, and for there's two reasons for this. Firstly, it's got 130 HP. Secondly, it does 40 damage for free energy, but it's really two energy time you put a DCE on there. And damage is reduced by 20 the following turn. Stick yourself a hard charm on there. You're doing 40 and reducing 40 the following turn. And like we've seen, most of the Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen, are not doing much more than 40 damage. You stick some Pokemon Center ladies and Super Potions in there. You've got the best deck in the format. The other relevant thing about Avalug is that he evolves from Bergmite. 70 HP is pretty good, but it's that first attack. For one, a Water Energy... Discard the top card of your opponent's deck. If you don't want to be using Avalug, say for instance your opponent is going aggro team flare grunt and discarding all of your energy, and you can never get two energy on there to get the attack off, you can just go for Bergmite and try discarding all of their deck. Maybe play it with something like Trick Shuffle. And the final Pokemon, which is relevant here, is probably the second best Pokemon in the format after Avalug. It's Torkoal. The first attack, 20 for 1, is underwhelming. The second attack, that's where it's at. 80 damage for free. And flip a coin if Tails discard an energy. Now that doesn't seem amazing, but bearing in mind, we have Blacksmith. So you can get this going on turn 1 of the game. You stick a Muscle Band on, there is no basic in this format that will survive a hit from Torkoal. Maybe Furfrow, because it's got 90 and the ability. And maybe they can put a hard charm on there. But it's doing a lot of damage quickly. It's got the water weakness, which sucks because Avalug's so good. But essentially, if you get a turn one Torkoal, Avalug ain't killing you anytime soon. And even if it does, you can try and get another one. Final card we'll mention, Dunsparce. It's risky playing this because it's got 40 HP and a weakness to fighting. But it's a basic with free retreat. And if you're playing a Torkoal deck, you can't really afford to be going just two basics. So you'll put one or two Dunsparce in there so you can free retreat into a Torkoal. That's the only reason it's in there. People have played it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Professor Cup format. This will be the first video going up. After this, you'll see seven videos. My five videos from my five rounds at the Professor Cup Rules Tournament followed by one of the two top four games and the final in their entirety, played by real people with real cards. Yay! Look out for them. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, subscribe and like and tell your friends and all that good stuff. And I will be back over the next few days with seven 
games played in the Professor Cup format. Several people have expressed an interest in seeing some games played in this format. I hope it's everything you wished for and a little bit more. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.